Okay. Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Douglas? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Before you were a writer, you were a post office letter carrier? Yes, sir. I started my postal uh, career right out of high school. I started off as a letter carrier. I moved up through the ranks to postmaster of Livingston, Texas. After I was postmaster of Livingston, Texas, I went to uh, detail to headquarters and worked at Washington, D.C. for a couple of years. So I had a long and a real uh, enjoyable career with the Postal Service. Okay, Very great. proud of the Postal Service. Well, that's great. So you have retired from that now? Yes, sir. After 40 years, I retired and kind of just took life easy and went after what I've always tried to dabble in doing was uh, trying to write in short stories. Were you writing all along that you were working at the post office or is this something that happened to you after you retired? It, it happened after I retired. I, uh, I guess I was a little bit of a romanticism. I always wrote uh, small little poems to my wife and uh, I always kind of enjoyed writing the small poems. But the Postal Service kept me very busy and uh, I figured after uh, I raised my family and retired, that I'd really delve into writing uh, some short stories. Well, on your bio, it shows that you've got five books out at this point. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, my last book was is called Fire, uh, Friendly Fire, a Vietnam veteran story. Uh, the one we have a photo of is a family torn apart. That's the one you sent us the, the photo for. Is that the one we're going to be promoting or? We're kind of promoting uh, all of them, right? <laughs> uh, well, I, I was wanting to promote the stubborn Debra Sue, but uh, a family torn apart. Uh, that's actually, actually, it's a trilogy. Uh, family reunited was part one. A family torn apart was part two. And the brainwashed by foster parents was part three. Oh, I see. OK, well, why don't we just cover you know, we'll do a quick overview of all of them then. And then okay. uh, people can sort of check you out on your website and decide which book they like. So tell us a little about that, the trilogy book. What is that? Okay. All about? Part one, A Family Reunited. That's a true story about my family. It tells about when I was six years old when we started, my family started getting reunited. Uh, it then goes on to tell about 20 short stories, uh, mostly the humorous and good moral stories of us brothers uh, living out in the Midwest. Uh, very uh, intriguing stories. Uh, some will have you cringing and some of them will have you laughing with the stunts we pulled. Uh, at the end of the first story uh, book, uh, my father had a horrible accident and the family spiraled downward and that led to part two where I saw my family torn apart one by one. A lot of dramatic events uh, in that one. Uh, the dramatics include alcoholism, abuse, abandonment, mental illness and poverty. At the end of that, I end up going to foster parents where I was brainwashed. I was brainwashed into joining a cult type communion, one where they didn't allow you to go outside of their communion. Uh, I guess you'd say everyone outside their communion was evil and worldly people. And so they really tried to control you. They refused to let you go to uh, finish high school. Uh, they kept you, tried to keep you ignorant, I, I'd say. So that's, uh, but it's all true stories about my family. Wow. Let me go back to the uh, the foster parents. Now, how did you end up there? Well, when uh, my family was torn apart at the end of uh, part two, I was taken to uh, uh, a shelter and the foster parents uh, picked me up from the uh, shelter. Uh, we actually, uh, during the time where my family was torn apart, 
uh, the foster parents actually knew my mother and they provided us a place to live uh, or they I'd say they negotiated a uh, place for us to live with some uh, country folks during that time. You and your mother left your father voluntarily. You weren't taken away from by the state, right? Uh, no, they uh, what happened was. My mother was uh, actually taken away. She was uh, uh, committed to an, uh, a mental institution and at that time, during that time, I, me and my older brother went to uh, uh, a shelter for the weekend. And then that next uh, Monday, the foster parents that had provided us with uh, lodging arrangements, they ended up taking me in. Oh, I see. How long were you with them? I was with my foster parents for four years, but uh, and throughout, there was a dramatic event that occurred and that gave me the strength to uh, end up leaving them. Uh, I always maintained a strong, positive attitude throughout my life, though, and uh, I ended up graduating high school uh, in 1970 at Southeastern Texas. And uh, I guess you'd say I had a good head on my shoulders. And after I graduated is when I went into the United States Postal Service. I'm looking at your bio and you and I are exactly 10 years apart. Uh, I was born in 62. You would have been old enough to be drafted to Vietnam at that, yeah? Uh, during that time, uh, it was, they were kind of starting to wind down. Uh, I was, uh, they had the lottery system for the draft and at the picture, your uh, number, the lotto number, based on your uh, birth date, uh, you, you would be uh, drafted, but uh, they never called my my number. Uh, but the last book, uh, Friendly Fire, that was actually a true story about my brother that uh, did go to Vietnam. Oh, I see. So is your brother older or younger than you? He, he He's uh, one year older. I had three other brothers, so I'm the youngest of all of us. Oh, I see. OK, so he actually went to Vietnam. Yes, um, sir. Did he come back? Yes, sir. He, uh, uh, he was wounded severely, but he did come back. And uh, uh, it, it tells uh, in that friendly fire it tells how the war impacted him and our family uh, during the war and after the war. You said it impacted your family. Can you give us one example of that? Yeah, uh, I would say uh, after he was uh, wounded, uh, one of the things that really impacted, especially my father, uh, they in back in them days, they you received a yellow telegram from the arm from the government, I guess, or the Department of Army, notifying that uh, your son or or was wounded or killed in action. And what they did was they made an error and they said he was uh, uh, had multiple gunshot wounds to both lungs. Uh, but in reality, we got a, another telegram about uh, two weeks later correcting it, saying he was uh, uh, had multiple gunshot wounds to both legs. So it really tore up my father and was a very emotional time during that time frame. So is he able to walk at this point? Well, uh, no, he 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 passed away. Uh, I I believe the Vietnam War uh, caused major damage to his uh, kidneys and stuff, and oh, I see. some of his vital organs. And he did live to be about fifty-one, but he he died at a young age. That is young. That is young to go. Yeah. Well, the war, I think, took its toll on a lot of people, both uh, physically and psychologically. When I'm just curious, when he went in, was he very pro, pro war, pro United States, pro we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, protecting freedom and? Well, actually, because of our upbringing 
and us being separated and he was sent to foster home uh, earlier before when I my family separated uh, my family separated when I was two years old and uh, my brothers were sent to a foster pair and uh, he, he was sent to one by himself my other two brothers stayed together and then we got reunited and then we got sent back to foster parents uh, and uh, he was very rebellious. We ended up getting back together again, but he was very rebellious and his rebelliousness led him down the path to joining the army at the young age of 17. And it was uh, because he refused to listen to my father and he was getting into trouble and uh, it's uh, he, he just uh, thought the army would be the best way out. And uh, so that's, he ended up joining and, and my father ended up, uh, he had to sign for him since he was 17 years old. And my father wanted him to go into the Navy, but uh, he refused because he wasn't gonna do anything my father wanted to, him to do. He always, him and my father always bucked heads. And uh, it was it ended up being tragic, but I I actually wrote the book to be for tri his tribute uh, for a servant in Vietnam. Though the last book, we've just got a couple of minutes left. I just want to make sure we hit all your books. Tell us uh, a little bit about the stubborn Deborah Sue, which I see the cover. A stubborn there. Deborah Sue is it's a true story. That's actually uh, my wife's story. Uh, she was afflicted with the polio virus uh, shortly after uh, uh, about two years old. And uh, it tells about her struggles and how she uh, refused to be bullied and her stubbornness and determination allowed her to always stand up defiantly and she never backed down and she ended up becoming a very successful woman. Uh, out of all the five books, that's my most passionate book that I have. And uh, it's only because of all the pain and suffering she had to endure as a little girl. But she never kept from smiling uh, throughout it all. She's a true remarkable uh, person in my eyes. Well, that's a great story. I remember that as a little kid that we did have a few polio kids in our class and they always had to wear those heavy steel braces on their legs exactly. and walk with crutches. And they always had a very unique walk in the sense that they would have those crutches with the arm clamps on them and they would basically throw their lower body forward with their upper That's body cool. muscles to, to walk because the legs had no they had no control of their legs at all. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, uh, I remember uh, that. Was she was she afflicted that severely? Uh, well? She she had to wear uh, at the very beginning. Uh, I'd say when she was two years old, she had to wear leg braces on both legs, but uh, the right leg got stronger and she was able to come out of that leg brace. But she had to wear a leg brace on her left leg. Uh, and they, uh, throughout her life, they did uh, several surgeries. A lot of them were experimental surgeries. And uh, she went through a, a lot of pain and suffering on that. And some of those uh, surgeries didn't work. But uh, she eventually, uh, with her mind, she forced herself out of those uh, leg braces. And she was able to, uh, with the help of one surgery she's able to do what they call a lock knee and she could throw her leg out and lock her knee and walk uh, without the uh, leg brace and uh, she went uh, she went like for about 15 years but unfortunately she she did come down with what they call post polio and uh, that's where uh, the muscles get weak again and she ended up having to go back in the leg brace well, Jeffrey, we do have to wrap this up. We are out of time. Do you have a website that you want to give out where people can check out the books you've got out? Yes, sir. Tracybooks.com. 
and it tells i do book signings that i have a contract with kroger stores and there's a page on there for events it tells where i'm going to be at to doing book signings because i enjoy going out there and meeting people and i try to do book signings wherever i can well i'm glad that COVID is kind of winding down because i imagine the book signings sort of went on hold for the last year yeah yeah, it did. You're absolutely right. I'm just now starting to get back into it again. Oh, well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. We do have to wrap this up. Uh, it was very nice hearing the stories. I, I hope the books do well and I wish you the best. Well, thank you, sir. And I appreciate you having me on your show, Douglas. I, I